This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. I was born out in the wheat and cattle country of western Kansas. But for years after that, I lived in urban areas across the street from the University of California in Berkeley, east of the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge, then in quiet Clayton at the foot of Diablo and Eagle Peaks, and now in the serenity of the Sierras, the majestic mountain range in which are nestled the scenic splendors of Yosemite National Park, Half Dome, El Capitan, Vernal and Bridal Veil Falls, and the great gnarled grizzly giant, sovereign sentinel of the mammoth sequoia trees in the Mariposa Grove, whose fragrant forest mists Mark Twain called the air that the angels breathe. And here in these mountains of coarse gold California, so named for the rough, large nuggets of pure gold found in these lands, I have learned to listen again to the soft sounds of nature. The chirpings of crickets, the cluckings of quail, the songs of frogs in the spring and by the streams, the sibilant whisperings of breezes and the long blue-green needles of the proud ponderosa pine trees. Here by my office library, the evening rustle of deer hooves through dry autumn leaves, coyotes howling in the hunt, even the distant growl of a bear or the cough of a cougar. But to hear these subtle sounds of nature, you must venture far from the cities and suburbs, into the quiet countryside of farms and forests, ranches and prairies, hills and valleys, and mountains, lakes and streams. You can't hear a bird chirp in a bowling alley, a frog in a fender factory, or a cricket if you're in a car stalled in a traffic jam. You must seek for the silence beyond civilization in which to hear the secret sounds of birds and breezes, the humming of hornets' nests, and the quiet creaking of tree limbs bent by the weight of wet snow. You can't hear these things in the fender-to-fender -fender frenzy of freeways, jolting jackhammers, torn steel tangled in the cables of wrecking balls, and the cacophony of honking horns, stampeding pedestrians, flatulating factory whistles, and screaming schoolyards. It is elementary. In order to hear the quiet things... You have to get away from the noisy things. And in order to hear spiritual truth within your soul, you must from time to time seek the silence of the prayer closet, the meadow, mountain, field, or stream. It is written, be still and know that I am God. Take time for God. Make time for God. For God has made time for you. Now, you make time for God in prayer and meditation and in daily worship. Learn to see God in the beauty of a rose, in the face of a child, in the words of a friend, in the pages of a book, and worship God with praise and spontaneous prayer. I read about one woman of great character who made it a practice whenever she met a stranger or whenever a newcomer entered into the room of saying in her mind to herself, Now, I wonder what of God... I am going to find in this person. Become thus open to these unexpected moments when there is a sudden radiant flash of the divine illuminating the dullness of the daily task and lightening the burdens of unremitting toil. For God speaks ceaselessly to those who have ears to hear and then set about the delight, the challenge, the great adventure of actually doing the will of God. Said Jesus, blessed is he who hears the word of God and does it, makes it active. I read in Africa, two victims of leprosy were heard lamenting their lives. I cannot plant my corn, cried one. My hands are now without any fingers. I have a good pair of hands, replied the other, his friend. He said, but the leprosy has so crippled my feet that I am no longer able to walk. How can I plant my corn? The two discussed it for a few moments, and then agreed upon a plan. They would work together, and so it was that the man with the feet carried the man with the hands upon his shoulders. And as they moved along the furrows, one dropped the seeds into the holes left by the feet of the other. Alone, you may not feel sufficient to encounter and conquer the problems of this life. But working together with others of like mind and soul and spirit, we can labor to bring a great spiritual renaissance upon this earth. 
which one day will make more differences in this world and the way it is than any war which has ever been waged, any battle which has ever been fought, any governmental, political, social, or economic upheaval in all of human history, and you may be part of it, and one day the nations shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, and the world will not learn the ways of war anymore. You can have your part in that. In God's great plan, there was a little boy who said, I know there are some things I cannot do, but then I think of all the things that I can do, and I don't worry about the rest of it. As it is written in the famous serenity prayer, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. The living God can empower your life in this moment to make a difference. Jesus declared, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Again, he said, I have come that my joy might be in you and that your joy might be complete. And again, he said, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Live your life in love for God and for others and live your life in vital faith. Years ago, there were two atheists who went to hear the famous evangelist, Dwight L. Moody, preach. And after hearing his sermon, one of the atheists was seen to be deep in thought and contemplation. His friend came over and said, well, now, come on now, don't tell me that you actually believe what Dwight L. Moody just said. No, his friend replied, no, I don't believe it, but he sure does believe it. In this life, either other people's doubt is going to shake your faith, or your faith is going to shake their doubt. Become a person of living faith. Said Jesus, have faith in God. With God, all things are possible. The three great powers of the spiritual life are faith and hope and love. There was a team of sociology researchers at Johns Hopkins University who set out to discover why a certain group of potential juvenile delinquents from the streets had turned out so well socially and morally and culturally in their later life. This particular study was done 20 years ago, and it showed these poor disadvantaged youths to be on the road to a life of crime. They were all young males. But when a subsequent check was made recently, it was found that these same young men all had been influenced by one single school teacher, a gentle white-haired old woman. And when the sociology researchers asked about those lads, she said, those boys, reminiscing, she said, I remember them very well. I loved them, every one of them. One loving teacher had made the difference in those young men's lives. Love can first transform your life and then touch and transform the lives of others and will one day transform this very world. For love is the desire to do good to someone else. Love is an undiscourageable goodwill. It is spiritual. It is born of God's great, infinite, almost blindingly bright, brilliant love for you. God loves you and cares about you. God has transformation for your life, and the kingdom of God is within a fragment of infinity, a glowing ember of eternity, indwells your mortal mind. Doctors have reported that if your heart is normal, it will beat approximately 100,000 times today in this 24-hour period of time, or a million times every 10 days. Think of that and between 36 and 38 million times your heart will beat this year. Every hour, your heart expends enough energy to carry a 150-pound person from the street level to the roof of a three-story building. Every day, your heart pushes from 5 to 10 tons of blood. That's depending upon the size of your body. Five to ten tons of blood your heart is pumping through your blood vessels. And if you live to be 70 years old, your heart will have exerted enough force to lift the world's largest and heaviest battleship up out of the ocean, 14 feet out of the water. Think of the incredible physical energy which there is surging through your veins of your body this very moment, yet without your even giving it a thought. And you might never have given it a thought 
Had you not heard my voice crackling out of your AM or FM or shortwave radio or by satellite somewhere around this planet talking about this very truth at this very moment, then think of the astounding spiritual energy which likewise surges in your soul. It can transform your life. The kingdom of God is within you. God loves you with a love which will not let you go. And this transformative power of the spiritual life can energize you in the way you think and feel and act and react, beginning to live at long last as you have so long longed to live, as you've always wanted to live, in faith and hope and love, as the son or daughter of God you really are. And it all can begin for you this very moment if in faith you will but dare to claim it. For free literature on the spiritual life, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, Questions University Students Ask, Any or All of This Literature, Yours with No Cost Charge, your obligation when you write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address. That's Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Denham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.